So I'm Lisa. I'm currently studying medical sciences and engineering, uh, the integrated master's version at the University College London in London, UK. Yeah. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, so let's just uh, jump into the questions. So why and how did you decide to study where you are? Um, so that was a bit of a winding process for me. Um, originally, I was intending to study in the U.S., which is why I completed around um, 13 U.S. applications, I think, 11 or 13. And um, at the last minute, I decided that uh, maybe the U.K. would also be a good option for me to apply to since um, I really want to study in an English speaking country. And it was also closer to home than the U.S., and it has incredible institutions like UCL, Imperial, King's. And so then I ended up applying to the UK as well. And um, I got accepted into a couple of universities in the US, including the University of Michigan. And then in the UK, I got accepted into UCL, uh, Imperial College, as well as King's College. And ultimately I ended up deciding on UCL because I really, really like the course that they were offering, medical sciences and engineering, because um, originally a couple years ago, I did want to do medicine, but I decided I would, after some work experience and things like uh, volunteering in a stem cell research laboratory, um, that medical research was probably more up my alley. And um, this course that UCL offers allowed me to take modules from applied medical sciences as well as biomedical engineering and biochemical engineering. So I really like the breadth that it offered me and uh, the, the different opportunities because it combined my love for math and the engineering um, modules as well as biology and chemistry in the medical. And I really did like the imperial course that I applied to as well, which was chemistry with medicinal chemistry. Um, but ultimately I decided that I probably wanted to lean more towards biological, the biological side of things. And then I decided on uh, medical sciences and engineering. And what advice would you give students that aren't sure exactly what to study or how would they know if medicine or biology is a subject that they should take? Um, it, as in like students who are applying to university or like yeah, academy. just generally, how how you know what what advice would you tell students that don't know what they're studying, or or what advice would you tell them to figure out if they should go into medicine or into biology? What you know, what what are the the skills or you think are the necessary qualities that you should like, or you know, to be able to know that those are the subjects that you should study? Right. So, I I think it really just depends on what you feel an innate passion for. I always lean towards. Um, sciencey sort of stuff and biology especially just really captured my interest. I was really interested in like neuroscience as well as like genetics and all those different sorts of fields. And um, as you can see, those are probably more physiological. And so I then wanted to do medicine because I also, of course, really like helping people and things. Um, but if you want to do like medicine specifically, you have to be ready to put in like grueling hours of effort and you have to really, really want to like give up your free time and everything, I think personally, in order to um, be a benefit to the public. And um, I thought I that wasn't exactly suited towards me because I just wanted to do more researchy type of stuff and maybe not interact with patients so much on a like very long-term basis and so then uh, I ended up going for like more medical sciences rather, rather than medicine but I mean if you know that you are really ready to like put in that effort and um, that like regardless you should money you should not be considering money at all if you're considering going into medicine um, I mean to get to the point where you'll be like, I mean, typically they say doctors make good money, but um, as a resident, like for a large portion of your youth, you probably won't be, and you'll just be um, working long nights and uh, I mean, just working to help others. But I thought that wasn't exactly what I wanted to do. So 
yeah, that's the advice I would give. If you're ready to really, really work hard and and um, just like kind of give up a part of your life to help others and do medicine. But um, if you just like more science aspect of it, then go for like biology or medical science. Do you feel like doing a work experience is vital to figuring out if medicine is what you should do or not so much? Um, I think it is. I personally did not end up doing like a medical work experience at, at a hospital or anything. I didn't, um, because of COVID and stuff, it was pretty difficult. Um, but I did end up attending an online talk and like, I followed a bunch of different, um, like medical influencers online and, uh, they really helped me gain some perspective into it and like after reading books on doctors experiences and stuff I think that should give somewhat enough of an understanding of what it's like but I would if you can definitely go for the work experience because that'll really give you the feel for it great yeah. no, that's really good advice and what would you give what advice would you give for students on figuring out what university to go to or I mean in your case what country you know to apply to or go to What was what were the things that you were considering um, when you were debating between different countries, especially with biology? I think it's an important subject to know what country you're going to because probably it does differ. Um, so if you could tell me about that experience. Sure. Um, so I guess if you're one for rankings, one of the good places to start is going to like QS or something and then ranking universities by subject, which you can do. And um, there you'll find like the best universities for your particular subject. And like re often the top ones are like research powerhouses like UCL, Imperial, Harvard. They produce a bunch of research and thus they're really highly ranked and they're good at like teaching it as well. Um, but for country wise, what I consider personally, um, I'm quite a family oriented person. So Although I did want to go to the U.S., I think um, as the decision approached, I realized I didn't want to be that far away from all my family, all my old friends. And um, the U.K. was a nice like middle ground for that. Like I got the whole <laughs> adventure experience, you could say, of going outside the country where I grew up and stuff. But I still have the options to go and visit from time to time. And I've had friends visit me here. So it's been really nice. Um, and I personally want an English speaking country, as I mentioned, so that limited my choices quite a bit. Uh, but if like if language barriers aren't an issue for you, um, then I guess you could just consider like lifestyle, cost of living is important. I mean, London is particularly expensive these days. Um, so that's an important factor to consider if that's an issue for you. And uh, yeah, I guess the factors for me were like distance to home and language. Yeah. Well, now to the most important question, <laughs> but it's uh, how how do you you know how did you research? How did you apply to UCLA? How did you apply to Michigan? Right? How do you get into these universities? Right? What what is something that students should know or consider when they're applying? Okay, so that's a really good question. Um. The processes for US versus UK applications are quite, quite different. Um, I personally much prefer the UK application process because of how time efficient it was. Uh, for the UK, you only have your personal statement that you write, and then you just like fill out your grades and everything and your personal information in UCAS. And I believe you do get some letters of recommendation from your teachers, but that's the same for the US as well. And so UK, just one essay for five universities was perfect for me. Um, after I sent in my UCAS application, I got uh, an interview from Imperial. Um, UCL just directly accepted me, as did King's. Um, but for Imperial, I did have an interview. And um, advice for that, uh, they really asked me questions Um, based on my personal statement. So I included my extended essay topic in my personal statement, as well as my work experience. And um, in my personal statement, I commented how those two things like were helpful 
um, would help me in pursuing my degree and stuff. And so they asked me questions about um, the biological slash chem chemical side of the experiment I did and like rapid, a couple like rapid fire questions. And I, um, I had kind of like gone over my extended essay and stuff and uh, having like studied for biology and, and chemistry, chemistry exams already, I had that knowledge. And so I, I was able to answer the questions. And then after they had discussed my personal statement, they also just asked uh, general chemistry knowledge questions. Um, for example, they asked me about the Bosch-Haber cycle or process, I think. And I, at first, I believe I got the answer incorrect for that question, but they could see I was stressed. So they, um, instead of asking the question directly, they asked like small steps to the question. And then I got all of those correct and it helped me and it helped them see my thinking process because when they first asked the question, I just replied um, without thinking a lot because I was so stressed. But once they gave me that step-by-step -step process, I was able to break it down in my head and really and give the correct answer. And actually after the interview, I requested a meeting with uh, the head of the program, I think, to ask a bit more about the, the course. And he actually mentioned that yeah, we really liked your thinking process and stuff. So as long as you explain your thinking and reasoning for your questions, that is extremely important for UK interviews. That's the advice I would give. And maybe go over your um, your notes for your classes uh, a few days before. But as long as you're studying consistently, it should be enough, I think, personally. Um, now for the US, totally different kind of <laughs> application. Usually in the US, people these days are applying to minimum 10 schools in my experience, like that's the average. And each school requires around two essays for it, as well as the main common app personal statement that gets sent to everybody. So it's, it's, it's an extremely laborious process. It's very time consuming. I spent my entire I kind of did it last minute. I do not recommend that. I did it like I spent my entire three week Christmas break just doing US applications. <laughs> so <in> my <laughs> start the summer before, like start planning the summer before um, and get your extended essay done then too, because otherwise you will be extremely stressed. <laughs> um, so I was doing all these essays. Some of them are 50 word ones. Some of them are longer, like 250 words. And uh, so I did those for each school. The research process I took, um, I kind of knew what I wanted to major in already. So I looked into specific classes that the universities offered that I would be interested in. So I said, oh yeah, I wanna come here because I wanna take this class and uh, take lessons from this professor and things like that, which shows you're um, really engaged and did your uh, research into the institution. And then I also looked at extracurricular opportunities that they offered, like at Michigan, they. Um, offer something called Europe, which allows you to take on like a personal research project. And I said I was really interested in doing that. And um, I guess once you start writing all these essays, you kind of get used to the flow of it and you can like kind of take pieces and put them in other essays as well. Um, but yeah, my advice, like start early, do your research into the institutions. Sometimes I did watch videos on on like what we want from college essays. And so I avoided the the common things that they uh, said they didn't like. And uh, yeah, uh, also, I think I also want to mention um, a lot of US uh, universities will ask for interviews. And I did get a lot of interviews from, I think I got one from Yale, Dartmouth, Harvard. Uh, yeah, I think those were, and MIT. Um, but in my experience, those interviews really don't matter that much. Uh, I mean, take my <laughs> take my uh, advice with a grain of salt, I guess. But the people who will interview you in the U.S. are alumni who are doing this for free. Um, the people who interviewed me in the U.K. were professors and researchers um, who still worked at the institution. But these people in the U.S. they're like alumni, and they just offer their time to like interview applicants. And um, honestly, for US interviews, it's more of an opportunity for you to ask questions about the university. So what I did is 
I had a list of questions that I printed out and I had it next to me. Um, and so at the end of each interview, when it was like, when they asked, so do you have any questions for me? I would go through them and stuff. And the US interviews were honestly very relaxed compared to the UK. Um, they ask you about your hobbies, your interests. Uh, okay, they do ask like why you wanna to go to this university. So do you have that in mind when you're doing your interview? Um, but I had a great time. <laughs> honestly, they were pretty fun. Like for MIT, I ended up talking with the guy for almost two hours because we were just having a nice conversation. And he got up to make spaghetti in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> so honestly it's quite relaxed um and yeah that's the advice I would offer don't stress too much about the interviews for the U.S. focus more on any IB work you have going on if that's more um important at that time uh yeah that's the uh advice I would give so then to summarize for the UK, the interview is super important and not only the knowledge on the subject, but also the, then the thinking process, right? And then for the US, yeah. what's really important is the essays, right? Knowing about the institutions, being prepared, right? Um, and do you feel like the IB helped you uh, in either of those cases for the application process and how did it help you, right? Mm -hmm. Um. For the application process, the IB definitely helped me for the UK because it gave me um, a lot of knowledge and talking points to discuss in my personal statement and then in my interviews and things. And honestly, these universities really love the IB. At least in my experience, the UK universities really, really value um, your higher levels and your IB score. Uh, like UCL just, um, I, I had a predicted 45 and I think that's maybe why I got accepted pretty quickly because um, UCL just took me uh, <laughs> uh, pretty pretty fast. Um, but for the US, um, IB scores are important. Um, they certainly do look at them. Uh, and if you do score well in your IB exams, you can actually use them as uh, credit for your first year. So you don't have to take certain introductory classes for example, I think um, one example I remember is like a certain intro to chemistry module at Stanford uh, that they offer. And if you get five in IB chemistry HL, then you don't have to take the class. Like you can just skip it. And that helps you save time and um, take, take classes that you actually like. Uh, but the US universities really, really value extracurriculars and hobbies and I mean, just and your essays. Um, in addition to your grades. So you'll really want to have like interesting extracurriculars and make sure they're kind of relevant to what you want to study. I think um, I perhaps, my my horizons were perhaps a bit too broad. I personally love music. And so I had a bunch of like musical extracurriculars. I had student council, MUN, but I still ended up getting rejected by and waitlisted by a lot of places. So um, I think it's probably better to have like very, very relevant specific extracurriculars when it if you know what you want to study. Yeah, that's what I would say. And specifically, just to uh, just to finish off the application process specifically for UCLA, what would you recommend? Uh, how do you how, I mean, how do you get into UCLA? What would you recommend in the application process? What is super important? To get into UCL, um, honestly, um, you need to you need to really have like make sure you have uh, a good IB score. I think UCL certain subjects are extremely competitive. You have to double check that your HLs match up um, their requirements, and um, if they don't, you don't really have uh, good chances of getting in. Um, to be really honest. Um, another thing, um, make sure you really show your passion for the subject in your personal statement. Um, show, uh, I mean, make sure to, ex like, don't just say, oh, like, um, I did this, I did this, I did this. State how they're relevant to the specific course and um, say how it 
how it'll help you achieve um, results because th they'll take you if they feel like you'll be able to succeed in their course. Uh, personally, um, I feel like the US universities, they're more about cultivating an interesting student body. So if you're applying to the US, you wanna show, show off your like extracurriculars, show off your personality as much as possible. But for UCL, for the UK, you want to show you are um, very certain about the subject you want to do. You want to show that um, you know you can do the course because you have um, you've done work experience that uh, that has shown you what the course will be like. You've um, studied extremely hard, so you have all the background knowledge that you need to succeed. And I personally, I included my SAT score on there because UK universities do look for that. So I use that for my US applications kind of. I included the fact that I was a national merit semifinalist. Um, I included any scholarships that, that I won. And um, yeah, I think that's about it. I, I told a bit of a background story as to why I'm interested in the subject I wanted to do and what got me interested as a kid and then how I progressed uh, and how I developed that interest um, later on. But yeah, for the UK, you want to show extremely like specific as to why you want to do it and how you know you'll succeed yeah. specifically for your subject biology do you have any advice on what students should do specifically if they want to apply to your subject as well like just talk about their general interest yeah um i specifically said <laughs> i had a bit of i had a bit of a hook at the beginning I said what got me into um, medical sciences was actually an axolotl. And uh, I did that because axolotls have the ability to regenerate their limbs and stuff. And my course um, will eventually study a lot of regenerative uh, medicine. And so um, using that kind of segue, I explained why I was into regenerative medicine. And then I um, I told them about my regenerative medicine and work experience. And um, so for a subject like medical sciences, it's good to have um, kind of like what got you into it, kind of maybe try to make it interesting a little bit. I mean, it doesn't exactly have to be, but, um, and then uh, you'll want to have the relevant work experience for it because I think they, that probably really um, not impressed them, but swayed them to take me because I kind of knew uh that showed them that I would do well yeah and then I also included my extended essay topic so it's actually good to have a relevant extended essay if you're going to do science so um since I knew I wanted to do something in the biological sciences department I chose an essay in biology but my essay was on plant biology and not physiology uh but I just said that the extended essay in general like doing that sort of biological research um, helped me understand how to um, how to be a good communicator of science and um, how to undertake experiments, which I think is also important to them because I currently have a module actually about science communication. And uh, so I think that probably was a good point to make because it showed them that I am capable of doing that. Yeah. Well, this is really, really useful advice. So thank you for sharing your experience. And just now for a more fun question, what is the um, what is the social aspect of the university, right? What do you do in your free time? Yeah, honestly, that's part of the reason why I chose UCL because UCL is known for having a pretty fun social life. And I kind of wanted to have, I wanted a fun university experience after the grueling stress of the IB and the social life has actually been great. Um, so I, it's been up and down, honestly. I In the UK, you have Freshers Week. It's a whole week of clubbing, going out. If that's not your thing, that's fine. There are a bunch of uh, different activities that um, different societies will offer. So there was a board game society night that I went to. We just had pizza and played board games together, but that was also a nice opportunity to get to know people. Yeah. And you see how like so many different societies, honestly, juggling society I don't know poetry society you'll find you'll find everything honestly and um if you don't find it you can make your own society that's honestly a great thing to put on your resume 
um, because it shows leadership skills. And um, yeah, I've made a lot of friends. We have single rooms, which I honestly love. Also part of why I didn't really exactly want to go to the US, I think, in the end, because you share your room. Um, but I've uh, made friends with all my flatmates. Um, I'm in a catered accommodation, but there are a, most accommodations you cook your own food. And that's a great opportunity to make friends because you all cook together in the kitchen and you can have a nice time and get to know each other. And there are honestly a lot of opportunities to meet people. Um, they made sure that we got to know people in our course specifically. We had course events. So I got to know, like do a little bit of networking and um, get to know other people who are into the same things as I was scientifically. And then, yeah, I also joined um, like the choir and a bunch of other societies and stuff. Um, but I do want to say sometimes you'll find that you're a bit lonely and you miss home and you don't and you miss your old friends. And um, that's OK. Honestly, that's totally normal. Uh, you'll find your people eventually. And um, UK universities have a lot of opportunities to do that. I think you just kind of you have to put yourself out there a little. Very, very sweet. <laughs> and just our final question, just uh, this is more for us, just a fun question. Um, what do you miss most about MSF? Uh, honestly, MSF was like a family to me. I just, I miss walking in and knowing everyone and saying, and just being able to have a conversation with anyone really, just how are you? And I, I miss the IB lounge. I miss our hangouts. They're always so fun. And of course, I miss the teachers, the amazing teachers. Um, I Some of my professors aren't as as nice as MSF teachers. So value them, show them your love <laughs> because they are incredible, honestly. They have a lot of great advice. And um, yeah, I just, yeah, I miss the MSF community. It's full of amazing people. Yeah. You're going to make me cry. <laughs> but yes. So thank you, Lisa, so much uh, for this interview. Your advice and experience is super useful. I think students will love to hear this. So thank you very, very much. And yeah. Of course. <laughs>